In this video, we'll look at camera settings and setup. If you have no knowledge at all about photography, we'll introduce you to the basics. If you're comfortable shooting a camera in manual mode, you might want to skip ahead. In the last video, we talked about equipment, but we didn't go very deep into how to use it. Shooting photos on automatic mode is limited, and you're probably not using the full potential of your camera. Manual mode gives you full control over how the camera takes pictures, and most importantly, we can ensure the sharpest photos this way. On a DSLR camera, you'll find a dial with several modes ranging from fully automatic to fully manual. Manual mode is usually marked with an M and gives you complete control over all three major settings that influence a photo's exposure and sharpness. Aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. The combination of these three determines how much light the camera captures. Aperture is the opening inside your lens. The larger this opening, the more light enters the camera. It's expressed as an F number, where a larger number means a smaller opening. Shutter speed is the time your camera will open its shutter to gather light. A longer shutter time means more light. It's expressed in seconds, but usually as fractions, like 1 60th of a second. And finally, ISO is your camera sensor sensitivity. Increasing the ISO means the sensor is more sensitive, gathering more light. If any combination ends up too high, your image will be overlit and blown out. If too low, it will be dark and underlit. Each of these three have side effects that can be a disadvantage. Large apertures result in much smaller depth of field, where elements that sit further or closer away might be blurry. Long shutter times mean your subject or camera might move during a photograph, leading to a blurry image. And finally, ISO overloads your camera sensor a bit, leading to much noisier or even blurry results. So you can't simply set all of them to the sharpest setting, as it would mean too little light enters the camera. Shooting manual is a balance act between all three, but how you set them depends on what you want to achieve. Expressive street photography will have very different requirements from our precise photogrammetry. What we want is an image as sharp as possible. ISO is easiest to set. Avoid automatic ISO settings and keep it as low as possible, ideally under 400, but 100 is the best option. Shutter time isn't a big problem if we're using a tripod and a static subject. We can easily go to longer times than handheld shooting would allow, up to a whole second if needed. Aperture is a bit less obvious. We don't want a large aperture with a low F number, as this could easily cause parts of our subject to go out of focus, and we want the sharpest possible image. The exact value depends per lens, so make sure to look that up, but usually it's between F8 and F16. It's worth mentioning you don't have to use full manual mode. The aperture mode, usually marked with an A, will let you set aperture and ISO manually, but automatically pick the right shutter time for you. So you give up some control, but it makes it easier to set up things. So let's repeat what we just talked about. Exposure is a mix of four factors, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, and the amount of light you're trying to capture. If any of these changes, you need to adjust the others. More light means lower exposure, less aperture might require longer shutter time, and lower ISO might require more light and so on. Getting it right takes some practice and experimentation. Now there's one more setting on your camera you might not want to leave up to chance. That's the white balance of an image. And this is what determines if a photo looks warm or cold. It's entirely dependent on the lighting. Outdoor sunlight easily looks cold. Indoor bulbs easily look warm. This value is expressed in Kelvin, K, and you want to match it to your lighting. Outdoor lighting is about 7 to 8,000 K, indoor is about 5,000. It's usually fine to set this on site if you're not too fussed about precise color accuracy. So now that you understand your camera settings better, you already have a good grasp on controlling your camera in manual mode, letting you take well-exposed, sharp photos. Some situations require even more control over sharpness, so the next video will focus on that.